what is it to be Armenian? And how much do we really know about Armenia and Armenian culture? And why is this important to help us understand what is happening in the Middle East today and in all those countries which surround present-day Armenia? My name is Tony Palmer and I want to try and make a film which answers those questions. Uh, I've made films with and about uh, Maria Callas and Margaret Fontaine and Yehudi Menuhin and Stravinsky. So where better to start than with the great Armenian composers, Komitas, for example, who collected all that wonderful folk material, and Kachaturian, whose ballets and orchestral music have travelled around the world, none more so, perhaps, than his famous sabre dance uh, from his ballet Gaina. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Believe it or not, it was a jukebox hit in the United States and was number one in the billboard charts of classical music. And it's been covered by absolutely everybody, from, from Woody Herman to The Pretenders, from the Andrews Sisters to Andre Rieu, from Vanessa May, even to Tom and Jerry, those famous Disney cartoon characters. So what do we know about Armenia and its iconic mountain, Mount Ararat, where Noah's Ark supposedly came to rest after the flood? But Mount Ararat is no longer in Armenia, but in neighbouring Turkey. In fact, Armenia today is less than one-fifth the size of what it was a hundred years ago. Why is that? How many people are aware of the legions of famous people who dominate our culture, but are in fact Armenian by descent? So why is Armenia so much smaller than it was a hundred years ago? Part of the reason is the Great Genocide, which began in 1915, when at least a million Armenians, and probably many, many more, were systematically slaughtered by the Ottoman Turks. An historical but embarrassing fact. Even the word genocide is apparently embarrassing, which the Turks, and not only the Turks, even Great Britain, continues to deny even today. There is no solid evidence that I've seen in 20-some years that the Ottoman Turks intended to destroy all Armenians. Whatever you want to call it, uh, there are clearly crimes against humanity being committed. Serious humanitarian crisis there. Um, in the era of that terrible trouble. Leave out genocide for a minute. Genocide just compounds it, makes it even worse. Uh, but I'm... I really hesitate to use the G word uh, at this point. Uh, I I'm, don't want to step into the gray zone today. I think the secretary will have to give our assessment of the facts and the law and, and the judgments. The fact that every Armenian wasn't slaughtered doesn't mean that that wasn't the intention of the Ottoman Empire. Because the fact that Hitler wasn't able to exterminate every Jew 
doesn't mean that wasn't his intention and that that wasn't a genocide. To bring this up year after year after year serves no useful purpose. At one fell stroke, 3,000 years of Armenian culture were wiped out by the genocide. Western culture was robbed of a vital part of its heritage. The oldest Christian churches in the world were destroyed. But not the music. That cannot be destroyed. So perhaps we can begin to answer the question, what is it to be an Armenian today, through the music? And not only of the past, the sound of the duduk as used in Ridley Scott's film Gladiator, for instance, but in a vision of the future. The music of Kachaturin, used here in one of the greatest films ever made, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey. And in many other famous movies, such as Ben Kingsley's film, The Children. Why not? Which also starred Geraldine Chaplin and Kim Novak. Why not? With a mountain of archive and specially filmed excerpts from his ballets such as Spartacus and his many symphonic works, we want to make a film which will be a celebration of Kachaturian and what he and his music represents, the very best of Armenia and Armenian culture. Because perhaps through music we can find some understanding of the horrors that Armenians have had to endure through the years, something acknowledged by all great artists. В исполнении великих советских музыкантов, таких как мой друг Давид Дойстер. Really, it's a great disaster what's happened in Armenia, unpredictable disaster. And I think it's great that all musicians in the world try to support in this. We, the artists, like everybody else, feel that we must take part in whatever can be done. Music can offer solace and moral support, but musicians can also react to the more immediate needs of those suffering. Music is probably the most immediate and poignant that man knows of the means for him to touch a heart. And so to care and then to give. So please help us to make this film a reality. Without your help, the film will not get made. And that, I suspect, will be an enormous disappointment, not only for Armenians, but for lovers of music around the world.